Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a beautiful day in the Lord. <clears throat> I have a devotion for you today, and um, <clears throat> it's called Fellowship in the Gospel. And the reading is based on 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2, where it says, Fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ. After sanctification, it is difficult to state what your aim in life is. Because God has taken you up into his purpose by the Holy Ghost. He is using you now for his purpose throughout the world as he used his son for the purpose of our salvation. Do you realize that you have a purpose? Do you feel like you have a purpose? Are you going through the ups and downs of that purpose? Uh, do you know what sanctification means? It means the action of something or declaring something holy, uh, being freed from sin or being purified. Um, we are purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you seek great things for yourself, God has called me for this and that. You are putting a barrier for God to use you. Because you have created the end result in your own mind. You don't know where God is taking you and how he wants to use you. As long as you have a personal interest in your own character or any set ambition, you cannot get through into identification with God's interests. You can only get there by losing forever any idea of yourself and by letting God take you right out into his purpose for the world. And because your goings are of the Lord, you can never understand your ways. This is just saying that once you've reached the end of your obedience and God is beginning to use you in the world for whatever he wants to use you for, you may not even agree with some of the things that God is speaking through you or using you for because you set the tone for who you are and what you are to do and how you're going to do it. But that doesn't mean how God is going to use you. So that becomes a barrier um, between you and um, what God intends to use you for. You may have an idea of what you want God to use you for and that becomes an obstacle to the intention of God. I, I have to learn that the aim in life is God's. It's not mine. God is using me from his great personal standpoint. And all he asks of me is that I trust him and never say, Lord, this gives me such a heartache. To talk in that way makes me a clog you know like a clog in the pipe you know it blocks god from putting the holy spirit through you to do and act out whatever the will of god is when i stop telling god what i want he can catch me up for what he wants without let or hindrance he can crumble me up or exalt me. He can do anything he chooses. He simply asks me to have implicit faith in himself and in his goodness. Self-pity is of the devil. If I go off on that line, I cannot be used by God for his purpose in the world. I have, quotes, a world within a world, unquote. 
in which I live. And God will never be able to get me outside of it because I am afraid of being frostbitten. Yeah, that only tells you people that whatever God is going to use you for once you come to the end of your obedience and now you are willing to allow God to use you in whatever way that is. You may have an idea that that way is going to appear uh, <clears throat> to be all righteous and um, and uh, according to your own, the way you, you have uh, identified your, your character to be. But you don't know if God is going to put you out there to be a bone of contention somewhere. Yeah, bone of contention. Because we don't know what the higher purpose of that bone of contention is. Might be fraught with dissension, but the result might bring about the fruit and you were used to do that. And if you have a specific idea about who you are and how you are to be used, you're going to impede God from using you to achieve his end result. I don't know if you understand that. It made sense to me. It just means it isn't going to be hunky-dory, people, when you're being used. The apostles were used, and they got stoned. And they were rejected, and they had to deal with that. And they didn't perceive themselves as people that would put themselves in that position to cause that kind of dissension in the world. But they were ordained to do it. And it most of the times probably went up against their own idea of who they were. And that they didn't want to be a bone of contention in the world and start a ruckus and a riot with people. They were a piece in God's puzzle. We have no idea how many pieces are in that puzzle or what the final picture is going to look like. But when we leave the world and give ourselves to Christ, and offer ourselves as an offering, we are the offering for Christ to use. Like before we came to Christ, we were an offering for the devil, and he ravaged our bodies with addictions and all kinds of things. And when we came to God, he healed us and made us better, and now we're being used by Christ. That's what life is here, people. It's either this or it's that. So, um, these particular, um, these particular devotions that I've, I, I'm reading from, it's uh, Oswald Chambers, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He has uh, several books out, devotions. They're very intense, they're very deep. You have to think. If you're walking with the Lord, and you're suffering, you're thinking. You're aware that you're in the tornado and not every day is gonna be calm. And um, yeah, I hope you understand these. I think they're great. And um, they inspire. They inspire us to think about what is really going on. And um, I hope you're not living in the world where you're unaware of all this that's going on. It's not. It's not. It's not all going to be flowers and roses, people. It's getting uglier in the world, uglier, as each day goes forward. We can't believe what our eyes are seeing. 
And um, because we are born in this time, we're going to have to go through these things. And being ambassadors of the Lord and being an offering to be used, we may become a part. We may pay a pl uh, play a part in uh, the things of the end times. We don't know what God has in store for us or how we're going to be used and to the extent that he will use us for his purpose. But we have to be ready, willing, and able. And when we experience something that cuts deep and doesn't agree with our own definition of our character or our, our purpose, we have to push through it and move on and continue for the Lord, no matter how difficult that might seem. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you have a beautiful day in the Lord. I'll be back soon with some more. God bless you and shalom.